what is good youtube and welcome back to a brand new video so we are back with another new look rebuild but in today's video we're talking about a team that obviously didn't change much at all this offseason they did give out some extensions so i guess that's different about them they drafted one player i think outside of that i don't think they changed that much and of course that is the team that just won the championship the boston celtics but if there's one thing we all know the boston celtics suck in 2k for whatever reason i have no idea why so we still have a challenge ahead of ourselves Let's jump in and do this new look five-year Boston Celtics rebuild. Before we get into today's video, make sure you guys drop a like on this one and subscribe if you are new to this channel. As always, greatly appreciated. We are currently on the road to 50,000 subs, so you want to go ahead and hit that sub button. That would be amazing as we're trying to get close or somewhat reach, you know, get close as possible to it by the end of this year. And if you're also looking for a share scenario, go ahead and search up that gamer tag under Crushables and you should be able to find it over on Xbox. Some people have told me, then they've been, they've been able to access it on PS5 as well. But like I said, let's talk about what the Celtics have done this offseason. Is it, it isn't a lot of new player movement, of course, but they did extend Jason Tatum. They extended Derek White. They extended Sam Hauser just recently as well. I believe they extended someone else, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe, um, maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Regardless, the one guy they did bring in was Baylor Shireman out of the draft. They got him with the 30th overall pick. So, yeah, that's like the one thing I think the Celtics did that changed their roster. Maybe they did something else that I'm just not thinking of. But, yeah, the Celtics are pretty much the same team, which is expected. They just won the damn championship. But like I said, as we all know, in 2K, they kind of suck. I don't know why that is the way it is, but we are going to simply test it out. Let's see if 2K has changed its ways at all. If I take control and I set the rotation that I think is, you know, as good as possible or you know what i'm trying to think of the right word but it doesn't matter as good as it possibly can be can we optimal that was the word i was thinking of the most optimal rotation that we can go with does that change anything or is boston about to be a team that just sucks again in 2k we'll see what happens so we got to cut a couple guys so we'll just go with the bottom here with watson and peterson unfortunately so Drew Peterson, um, undrafted. I don't even know where he's from, to be honest, but we're just going to go ahead and cut him. So, uh, Power King landed second overall, which is great. So, if we take a look at the rotation, it's Drew Holiday, Derek White, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Porzingis. That sounds like an optimal starting five to me. Peyton Pritchard, Al Horford, Luke Cornett, Xavier Tillman, and Sam Hauser. Now, that's a lot of bigs off the bench, but it's just kind of where we're at. Maybe Jordan Walsh finds himself in the rotation next year as well. I could definitely see that happening. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, this is exactly how we want it to be. What are shot tendencies looking like? So Tatum's is a 99, Jalen Brown's is a 99. So yeah, everything's looking good in my opinion. But will that translate to being good in 2K? Proficiency, four-star balance is what we got. And I guess we'll leave it at four-star balance. So let's simulate this season. We'll send Jordan Walsh to the G League and uh, we will see what happens. So can we send another guy to the G League as well? I think we can. Why don't I do that as well? So we do Shireman or Springer? Um... Shireman is a shooting guard. I guess we can send him to G League because we can move him to small four technically as well if we need to. But let's send those two guys to the G League. Let's simulate number one. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to stop at the deadline. I simply want to see what 2K thinks of the Celtics team and if we're going to miss the playoffs or not or even be good in the playoffs. Today's video is brought to you by two softwares designed to help you beat the sports book and become a much profitable sports better. And we're starting on Daily Grind Fantasy's Optimizer. So if you play on apps such as Prize Picks, Underdog, or any other DFS app, this is the tool to have right here. As you can see, there's actually a great play on the board at the moment. It is late at night. But we have an over first run inning. If you've heard of a no run first inning, those are very popular nowadays. But the Boston Red Sox versus Colorado Rockies. The sports books are telling us that there is looking like there's going to be a run in the first inning. As you can see, Pinnacle at minus 123, minus 136 on FanDuel, minus 130 or minus 140 on DraftKings, and minus 135 on Caesars. So you would plug and play this on price because the data is telling you that there could be a run first inning, which is why having a tool like this is so clutch. We found that within two seconds, just like that. With doing this, we're not betting with our gut or, you know, taking our emotions into things. We're simply letting the data come to us and tell us what we should play that's how this works trust me it works man it really does and of course another tool that i use is uh Oz jams positive ev tool so what this does it basically does the same thing but on the more traditional sports books such as FanDuel, uh bet mgm so we actually have an example on the board at the moment so uh, a total runs over seven and a half on uh the reds and braves game very early tomorrow 
Both these sports books are offering you minus 110 odds when you have average odds of minus like 150 with these guys. Look, I mean, minus 149, minus 151, minus 156, and minus 154. Clearly, if you take this on BetMGM or Fliff, you're getting a great price because as you can see, every single book is heavily favoring this to be a huge or a uh, obviously over seven and a half total run. So that is why we take that and we found that within two seconds. Like I said, both these softwares are insanely clutch, insanely profitable to have. Make sure to check them out. Links are down in the description below. Use my code CRUSHABLES. You get a percentage off your first month. Other than that, let's get back to the video. So at the end of year one, Luka Doncic wins MVP. Alex R, Rookie of the Year. Simmons, six man in Brooklyn. Wimby Defensive Player. Amon, Most Improved. And Shea is your clutch player. And Mark is your coach of the year. So here's your NBA first team. We get a Boston Celtics representative, and no, I don't think we did. That kind of sucks. Here's an offensive uh, first team with Shea, Edwards, Giannis, Mobley, Wimby, and here's an offensive second team. So no Celtics representatives whatsoever on any of these teams. But hey, one thing I will take today is we actually made the playoffs. We're the fourth seed in the East, so I will take that over missing it. I believe the last Celtics rebuild that I did, we straight up just missed the playoffs. So I will take this over that alternative. Although that really shouldn't be an alternative that I have to face, but that's just 2K for you. So I'm also going to go to an iron rotation for these playoffs. Do we go eight man? I'm not opposed to going to eight man. Uh, yeah, let's go eight man rotation. Let's see what happens. If we run an eight man rotation with the Celtic squad and let's see if we can go back to back and bring home another championship, get a championship out of the way in year one. We draw Charlotte in round one. We of course, have Lamelo, Trey Mann, Brendan Miller, Miles, Mark Williams, Nick Richards. And Grant Williams. So what's the worst that can happen here? Somebody curve around against Charlotte. And we are going to be in an even series with them. Okay. Well, that's not a good sign. Let's see if we can maybe win game five. We shouldn't be sweating against the Hornets of all squads. But here we are. And uh, this is a back and forth game. They're in TD Garden giving us some problems right now. And we are going to win it. So just by three points. But hey, a win is still a win. And now you go to a game six in Charlotte. We're going to have to see if we can take them out. I believe Charlotte's arena is called the uh, arena is called the Spectrum Center, if I'm not mistaken, and it looks like we are going to come to the Spectrum Center and beat them. So hey, we won a playoff series today. That's fantastic. So now we're going to get the Knicks or the Magic. I would love to get the Knicks to see how well we match up against them. Of course, they built the team that they have to try to match up against the Celtics, and it is the Knicks. So Knicks, the second round should be a ton of fun. While you have Indiana and Philly on the other side, Oklahoma City, Sacramento, and Dallas and Minnesota. So a fun playoff bracket still left. All right, so New York, of course, like I said, they built the team that they built to try to compete with the Celtics. I have a feeling they beat us here, but, you know, it's going to be exciting to see if those two teams match up in real life, what that will look like. Uh, but somebody cut around against New York, and we are down 3-0. to zero. Yep, that's uh, that's 2K for you. So, uh, yeah, we get swept by the New York Knicks. All right, well, we didn't even stand a chance, I guess. At least we made it to the second round in 2K, which is better than usual that I've seen from the Celtics. But... It's going to be the Knicks and the Mavericks. So Jalen Brunson's first is his former squad, and he does beat them to go on to win it all. So I guess we lost the team. They went on to win the whole thing, whatever. All right. Al Horford's going to call it a career. So that's going to be like $10 million less off of our books. And don't worry, have to re uh, worry about resetting him as well. We go to the lottery. Uh, Miami is going to get number one in this draft. And then uh, do we even have a pick this offseason? I have no idea. So we have the 23rd pick apparently. Okay. Well, I mean, if we can hit on that pick and add another really good player, I mean, we could feel pretty good about ourselves. So I'm going to keep Joe Missoula. Um, we just won a championship with him a couple years ago, so I'm not going to move on from him now. Uh, do we want a good assistant, though? Like, maybe we can get, like, Brian Keefe to come over to be our assistant, and he will, which is great. So Brian Keefe, welcome to Boston. And then maybe getting Will Hardy and bringing him back wouldn't have been a bad idea either. I believe Will Hardy used to be an assistant. But nonetheless, if we can get a guard guru... Uh, we'll have a great offseason as far as the staff is concerned. So that's a great start. All right, so we have the 23rd pick. So let's see if we can maybe slam a jam on this pick and get, you know, nail it. I don't even know what the hell I just said. But 23rd overall, Noah, Trey Johnson, Carter Bryant. Really can't go wrong with any of these guys. I think if we can, I think we go Noah here. I know Stoyakovic would be cool as well. But give me Noah. Give me another wing here out of France. So welcome to Boston. I actually think we did pretty good with that pick. So yeah, he's going to be able to contribute right away, which is nice. Uh, free agency, nothing to worry about there. And then qualifying offers, Jane Springer's are only free agent. Okay. When it comes to Boston, obviously, as we know, all know, they are well over the second apron. So we're not gonna be able to do like anything too crazy this off season. So don't expect like a big major trade here to happen because it's just not going to. So I honestly think the main thing I want to do is make sure we don't have so many damn bigs coming off the bench. So 
Grality Peyton Pritchard looks good to me still. Derek White and Shireman. I don't know if Shireman's really going to be able to play next year, uh, but we did just get, you know, Noah, who should be able to contribute. Tim Hauser, maybe we slide him to shooting guard instead of leaving him at the three right now. And then I guess, yeah, Tillman would be our backup five currently. So uh, with Al Horford gone, Tillman steps up at that spot. All right, well, I guess the only thing we could truly do is sign a backup four and pretty much run it back. That's probably what we'll do. And then if Jordan Walsh and Shireman develop, that's a plus. So we'll see if that ends up happening. But uh, power forward on a minimum for Boston. We have Sasha, who just got waived by the Raptors, I believe. Uh, I think he like really wanted to go overseas really badly or something. So uh, I don't know who this guy is, but I could tell he's a young player. He might sign for the minimum. Uh, maybe? No. Uh, Tomlin? Uh, he's not going to sign for the minimum. So minimum is all the way down here. So that's not going to work. Okay. I believe the minimum is more than that, though. But whatever. So, Springer, um, Cornette's also free agent. I don't think I'm bringing him back this time around. Brissett was our backup power forward last year. I guess I'm going to just do the old strategy of going to day 12 and seeing what power forward we could snag on the last day because you could really get a steal there. So, going to day 12. Again, Boston only has a minimum that can sign since they are over the second apron. Let's see. Um, Oyan doesn't sound too bad. Lyles, Oshai would be cool. Lamar Stevens is all right. Uh, met to uh, Kenrich Williams doesn't sound too bad. Watford. So nothing crazy. You know, there's nothing crazy here. Maybe getting Isaiah and developing him would be cool, but I doubt he signs a minimum. So that's not going to happen either. All right. So who do we want? Lamar Stevens maybe is our best bet. So I guess we'll just sign Lamar Stevens and call it a free agency. So yeah, this was a very eventful offseason, as you can tell. So Drew Holiday is regressing. So that kind of sucks, but that's to be expected. Walsh is up, which is great. So to see him developing is awesome. And Shireman's also going up. So that's that. All that's looking great. But we're probably going to next season and pretty much running it back again. And if I guess we have problems and we're about to miss the playoffs outright, then maybe we try to make a major move at the deadline. I don't want to split the Jays today necessarily because those guys are good. Just a matter of figuring out like what is wrong with this team that they just suck in the 2K sim. I don't know what it is, man. I really don't. Uh, but regardless, you know, we'll see what happens. So going to year number two, power ranking lands us first overall and we're a four and a half proficiency for crying out loud. So really can't be too mad about what we got going on here. So Drew Holiday, Derek White, Jalen Brown, Tatum, Porzingis, Peyton Burchard, Tillman. I mean, it's pretty much the same damn team. I don't really have to explain that to you. So we'll run it back. That leaves Jordan Walsh on the rotation again, which re really sucks. I do want to get him involved, but, uh, maybe we go ahead and, uh, actually we could run a 10 rotation to get him some minutes this year. And then we get to send Bailey Shireman to the G League again, and uh, he would probably be ready to be uh, a contributor next year. So we'll do that. We'll see how this season goes. And obviously, we'll hope that uh, this regular season goes a lot better than last year. Although last year wasn't too bad. At the end of year number two, Luka Doncic wins MVP. Dylan Harper is your rookie of the year. Nicole is your sixth man. Wimby defensive player. Rob Dillingham most improved. And Anthony Edwards is your clutch player. And Mark is your coach of the year. And John Murphy is your executive. So here's John B. First team. All NBA second team, all NBA third team, all defensive first team, and all defensive second team. So once again, didn't really see any Boston Celtics, which is quite surprising, not going to lie. Uh, but we ended up being a playing uh, play team this year as with a seventh seed in the East. I assume we can get past Miami and then we're back in the playoffs. But yeah, really disappointing to see ourselves as a playing team. So I did extend Kristaps Porzingis. I thought it made sense to keep him around. Derek White with 12, 11 from Pritchard, 9 from Drew Holiday. Seven from Sam Hauser, seven from Noah, and then five from Tillman. So we will see, though. We're going to jump straight into these playoffs. Play-in tournament, I guess, is be... Wow, why are we really... So Drew Holiday is hitting the bench, and I guess Peyton Pritchard is going to start, which is very, very interesting, to say the least. But uh, hopefully that gets us past Miami, and it sure does. We get past Miami, and now we get Toronto. So Toronto's got Manu Quickly, Jacoby Walter, RJ Barnes, Miles Turner... Yaka Pertle, Grady Dick, and Isaiah Jackson. Someone in Curran against Toronto, and we are down 3-1. to one. Bro, 2K is just... I don't know, man. I don't know what it is about this Boston team that 2K hates. Like, I don't get it. I really don't. Um, but, hey, maybe we come back from 3-1 to one and everything's all good. But uh, we are going to beat them in Game 5. Can we come back or can we win Game 6 as well? I guess we'll find out. So, Game 6 in TD Garden to force the game seven back to Toronto. And, uh, well, it's going to be a close one, it looks like. So it looks like we might have this until... Okay, so we forced the game seven. Jalen Brown with 43. Love to see that. And now it is time to see if we can win this game seven to get ourselves into the second round. We shouldn't be sweating this much in the first round, but here we are. 
and Toronto took the lead. Do they keep it? And it looks like they are going to beat us. Okay. All right. Well, I told you it'd be a challenge today, and here we are really just getting absolutely challenged by 2K. We get bounced in round one and seven to Toronto and Charlotte, and then uh, Toronto, Milwaukee, and then the Thunder go on to beat the Raptors in six games. Okay. Well, uh, Chris Paul is going to retire. I kind of want to see if Drew Hall is going to retire, but he still says no. He's going to keep going. So I think we have to try to make a drastic change. Now, if I'm the Celtics, this is years down the line. So I don't know where they'll actually be as a team. They could maybe win two or three more in a row or whatever. But clearly 2K is not giving us those results. So we got to try to make some type of change. We have the 21st overall pick. I think we got to trade, you know, one of the core pieces. I think we have to. Like, we can't just keep running it back and expecting different results. It just clearly is not working. So uh, the Jays are here to stay. Porzingis is here to stay. So it's between like Derek White and Drew Holiday. So, I mean, clearly, I think the outliers probably Drew Holiday because Derek White is at least still very good in 2K at an 88 overall. So, uh, 89 rather. So, Drew Holiday with two years left in his deal. He is 36 years old. I'm sure he would still have value around the league. But, you know, Drew Holiday is a guy that if I'm Boston, I would keep. But we can't keep running it back. So, that is why we're going to explore the market for him. We can only include his contract. We cannot ag aggregate salaries um, with any salaries we have. So, we'll just see what Drew Holiday and maybe this 21st overall pick gets us i guess so i have seven trade offers on the table and they aren't too bad so i threw drew holiday the 21st pick and this eighth pick all together to see what would pop up so the charlotte hornets are off me josh green and grant williams which is fine and all but not really sure if i want to go that direction although josh green would be a really solid player to bring in uh d is interesting we have to trade a 20 31st which i'm not going to do i'm pretty sure boston doesn't even have their 20 31st i'm pretty sure that was sent was that sent in the blazers no that was 2029 i think they sent in the blazers trade so uh, maybe we do have our 20 31st but still not interested in trading it for one of these guys getting dink and schroeder is cool but i'm not doing that capella is interesting because we get a really good backup five and we know capella is kind of a cheat code in 2k so that would probably put us back on the map this one catches my attention as well. Uh, I'm probably not going to do this one either. Brogdon and Joe Val are just too old. So John Collins in 17 is fun. But honestly, I think if I want to try to turn this team around, it's weird to say that Capella is the kind of guy that could do that for us. But it truly is the case that Capella could probably help us out with that. So yeah, I'm trading Drew Holiday for Capella and Jock Landale. So the Rockets, you know, are probably in their contender phase now. They want to try to contend as soon as possible. Maybe they find some value in getting Drew Holiday. Capella would be our brand new backup five. And I think he'd actually turn us around weirdly enough. But we'll see if that ends up being the case. Now, if I could do this without Jock Landale Sauer in here. No, I have to have it. Okay, no big deal. So we'll go back. We'll offer that again. Oh, I guess got to put it in there again. So 21 and 20 or 21 and 8. We get Capella. We call it a day. We have to take on Landale Sauer. That's fine. But Drew Holiday is now a rocket while we get Capella. So yeah so we ultimately solve our backup center position tillman was the guy i did extend him i didn't really foresee getting uh you know obviously capella this off season but whatever you know we got extra center depth we also just got landale we can kind of maybe move that eight million dollar salary elsewhere if we need to but we need to make a change and we have made that change so i think we could slide Derek white to point guard and get away with it as well so he actually stays the same so we'll probably end up doing that so Derek white is going to play point guard for us not peyton pritchard I don't really want Peyton Pritchard to be the starter. So I guess starting shooting guard right now would be you know, either Sam Hauser or, you know, maybe Noah could play there or maybe we move Brown there. Like we could do a bunch of different things if we really wanted to, but we needed to make some type of change. And we have done that with, uh, you know, Clint Capella and Capella obviously is not a guy that I think would turn your franchise around in real life, but in 2k, we're trying to make the Celtics better. So balancing real life and 2k with the Celtics is not easy. Uh, but we're trying our best. So qualifying offers Nima, Nima Skeeta is a free agent. We're about to go into year three and have had no success as far as getting the conference finals with Boston, which is just sad. So we did also send out. No, we're still over the second apron for sure. All right. So we're going to pretty much have the same roster once again. I'm curious to see how much Walsh and Shireman maybe go up in overall. That would probably be a huge help. Uh, you know, it would be nice to get another power forward in the building, but I don't think it's even really going to matter at this point. So, yeah, I think I'm just going to go straight to player progression. I want to see how much our young guys develop and we'll see if they can make a, you know, a contribution here in the rotation next year in year three. So Nemus is uh, Nemus Kita is back. But so Noah's up to 79, which is fun. So I kind of like that. So I think we low key might start Noah at the small forward spot. His shooting is not there. I just realized he's a D plus three point shooter shot 27 percent. But at this point, maybe we just roll with it because if we don't, we start Sam Hauser. 
I guess we could technically move Sam Hauser back to small forward. Jordan Walsh only up to a 76, so a little disappointed there. And Shireman did not move after a G League stint last year, so that sucks. But I think that's probably what we'll do. I think we'll ultimately move Jalen Brown to shooting guard, and that's probably what we'll have to roll with. So Jalen Brown will be our starting shooting guard, and then it'll be Jordan Walsh. It'll be Peyton Pritchard, Derek White, uh, Jalen Brown, Sam Hauser, Noah, and Jordan Walsh. And then you have Jason Tatum, and then Porzingis and Capella. So... That is what we'll roll with for year number three. We'll see if that makes any difference. I find, I, I don't know. For some reason, I think this is going to go a lot better. For whatever reason, I feel like every time I've had Capella in 2K, things just drastically change for me. So we'll see if that ends up happening. I could be just delusional, but I'm excited nonetheless to see if it changes the Celtics curse that 2K has on them. So for efficiency, four-star balanced. Uh, so, all right. I guess our you know our balance system went down a little bit, but that's fine. Diamond rotation: Derek White, Jalen Brown, Noah, Tatum, Porzingis, Capella, Peyton Pritchard, Tillman, Sam Hauser. So I'm gonna throw Jordan Walsh in over Tillman. I want Jordan Law, uh, Jordan Walsh to play this year, so we're gonna do that. We already have Capella come off the bench, so no need for Tillman to play. But we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Let's simulate year number three, and let's hope that the curse has finally been lifted. So another MVP award for Luka Doncic, Koa Pizza, Rookie of the Year, Collier's your sixth man, Wimby Defensive Player, Isaiah Jackson, Most Improved, and Steph's your Clutch Player, and Greg Povich, Coach of the Year, and John Murphy is your executive. So here's John B. First team, you got Luka, Halliburton, Shea, Jokic. Do we finally get a, finally, Tatum makes an All-NBA team. 28 points per game, love to see that out of him, so that's fantastic. Uh, here's All-NBA all third team, All-Defensive first team, and All-Defensive second team. So... We are not a playing team. We do actually make the playoffs this year, so that's good at least. Uh, but we're still not really like that top team in the East that I've wanted to see us be. That just has not happened. Uh, but Porzingis, Derek White, Noah, nine. And then, you know, as you can see, eight and nine for Capella, six and then uh, four from uh, Sam Hauser. So I'm going to shrink this down to an eight-man rotation in the playoffs. We're just going to go eight-man right away. Um, they want to play Tillman, but again, I'm going to play... Now, I'm going to play Sam Hauser. He's the one that's getting the, the money. So, I'm going to play him. And we are going to see if we can beat the Knicks in round one. You know, Knicks, of course, you know, embarrassed us when we first played them a couple years ago. They still have a very good team. So, maybe they just beat us again. No problem. But we'll see what happens. So, something around against them. And we got ourselves an even series. So, let's see if we can... Uh, they want to give Tillman those minutes. I'm going to leave him out still. So, here we go. Game six and TD Garden. Let's make sure we win this one. Or, uh, sorry, this is game five, I should say. If we can win this one, I would feel pretty good about our chances. We almost kind of blew it, but we do hang on to the lead. And now we go to a game six. This one will be in Madison Square Garden. Uh, so we'll see. I want to give less minutes to Capella. I'm just going to leave things the way they are right now. And let's see if we can win this game six to advance to round two. If we could beat the Knicks. I feel pretty good about our chances. And we are going to be the Knicks pretty convincingly as well. So that's a huge W. And now we draw the Indiana Pacers, who, of course, have Halliburton, Nimhard. You got Matherin, Siakam, James Wiseman, Mark Williams, Obi Toppin, Tyus Jones, and Jairus Walker. So a very solid Indiana team. Can't wait to do their rebuild as well here soon. But here we go. So game one in Indiana. Uh, we're going to win. So that's a good start. Love to see that. Game two, they even it up. All right. So we're going to... Fix the rotation up because they were suggesting some minutes changes. But once again, I'm going to throw, um, you know, Sam Hauser in over Tillman and we'll see if we can win game three. Uh, whoops, that was Detroit series, not mine. Game three, two to one. Okay. And no, we're going to eat, let them even it up. All right. Game five in Indiana. We just found ourselves in this position uh, with the Knicks. Of course, we had home court advantage in that one, but. Uh, Hopefully that doesn't stop us. We take the lead at the end. We almost took it, but they hung on to it. 27 and 27. All right. Well, game six. All or, you know, all or nothing here. We got to win this one to force the game seven back to Indiana. We have the lead right now. If we hang on to it, we're going to a game seven, and Indiana is going to take it from us, and we are going to lose in round two. So far, uh, you know, even after. So we've gotten to round two and not much after that in the Thunder go on to beat the Pacers, but the Pacers took them the seven. Okay. I mean, what else do we do now? What's there to do next is the question. We're about to go into year four. We have not even touched the conference finals with the Celtics, which is just downright embarrassing. All right. Well, um, that's via Philly at the number one overall pick. Shout out to them for that. We got to figure things out, man. I mean, do we fire Joe Missoula? I mean, there are some good options out here. Darvin Ham, Rick Carlisle, Mike Brown. 
Even though I don't think it's Joe Missoula's fault necessarily, I guess I'll try to make that change to see if that changes anything. So Missoula's gone. Mike Brown, we can get McNeely or Ime. You do Ooh. Do we get Ime back in Boston? Ime, I know, left Boston for some terrible things. Uh, but you know what? No, he they were pretty damn good with him. So I'm gonna bring him back. You know, they were good with Mozula too, don't get me wrong. But um I'm 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 happy the Ime Udoka coming back. So Ime Udoka is back in Boston. Um, and now we can go ahead and go straight into um, draft night. I don't even know if we have a pick in this draft. We might. I don't know if it's really going to matter. Well, actually, it's probably a pretty solid pick. Yeah, so 21st overall. So we traded our pick last year, of course, with Drew Holiday. Do we want to do anything? I mean, we changed the head coach, but does that really solve anything? I think we're going to trade Sam Hauser. I mean, he's the one that's making the most money that we can maybe potentially do something with it. So I think that's where we're going to go with this. So we'll see what we can get for Sam Hauser. Potentially looking for a forward in return. Let's see if that pops up at all. So Caleb Martin you know, is a forward, but 31. Maybe looking for someone a little bit younger. D'Anthony Melton's not bad. Simone, okay. What else? Uh, Jeremiah Robinson Earl. Nothing. Nothing really popping up that's catching my interest. I mean, we're getting a Cogs and a Walker and... Juan Nunez, but I'm not looking to trade another pick. So, you know what? I'll take a look and see if maybe a Ford I can get to pop up that didn't pop up in that trade finder. Unfortunately, nothing's coming back for Sam Hauser. So, we're just going to go ahead and draft with this pick. And at this point, I don't really know who's good. JJ Andrews, Cole, you got Brandon, you got Jordan Smith, Maxim, uh, Chet, and then Dylan. I guess we take the guy who's projected potentially to be an all star. Uh, so he gets uh, Chet out of Senegal. Welcome to Boston. Uh, Baylor Shireman and Collins will accept. So we'll send those or accept those. And then qualifying offers, nothing going on there. Okay. Um, so we got a new head coach, but does that solve all of our problems? Probably not. I am going to bring back Jordan Walsh. I'm going to hope he continue to pray he develops more. Landale's contract is gone. So that's kind of a good for us. Uh, Tillman, I think, is still locked up uh, here as well. Uh, so yeah, I guess Tillman's salary could maybe be sent out as well, potentially. So. Let's see. I did have something that I kind of liked from Cleveland, but they couldn't take Hauser's contract. So what if I can get Wiggins for Tillman? I don't know if they'd be interested in this. So Wiggins for Tillman, I'll trade you a, you know, a few seconds. I don't know if that would change anything. They're not interested. What if I threw three seconds at you for uh, Wiggins? They say no. Okay. So we can't get Wiggins. Uh, we'd have to trade a first to get him, I imagine. But if I get Wiggins and I move him to small forward, he goes up and overall like crazy, which is why I kind of want him. I don't think I can aggregate salaries at this point still. So let's see if that is the case. Um, yeah, so we're definitely over the second apron still. All right, so I'm fine with trading a first round pick if that means we're getting Wiggins and making a change. It's just we got to make sure that, uh, you know, we can make it happen. So Wiggins, and then I'll throw the second in here. So that's a Spurs swap. Maybe they'd be fine with that. And wow, okay, that's all it took. You know what? I will absolutely take that. So we get Aaron Wiggins. And like I said, if you move him to small forward, he goes up to an 82, which is why I was more than happy with trading a first for him. So welcome to Boston Wiggins. We make another change. So we'll see if that ends up paying off in the long run, but I'm happy to have him regardless. All right, so the head coach change, and we bring in Aaron Wiggins. Is that enough? to be finally good i don't know i have no idea we'll see man i'm trying my best here i'm doing my very best that i can to stick with these cba rules and you know trying to make the celtics actually work in 2k it shouldn't be this hard but that's just kind of the reality we're in right now so walsh noah's up and we bring in wiggins who will probably start over uh you know who will probably have better floor spacing so that's fun ime udoka is the head coach but gear number four We'll see, man. I mean, I'm hoping it finally gets all put together. This is going into year four. Proficiency is four-star defense, but we can be a four-and-a-half balance. Sign me up for that. So go to a four-and-a-half balance to uh, be settled on that. And we'll take a look at the rotation all together in here in just a second. But this is what it's looking like. So you have Derek White, Jalen Brown, Aaron Wiggins, Porzingis, Jason Tatum, Capella, Noah, Peyton Pritchard, and Jordan Walsh, and Bailey Shireman. So I'm cool with that 10 rotation for, or is that, sorry, yeah, because Sam Hauser is the one not getting minutes down, which I feel bad about, but Walsh is up to 78, so I think the guy's got to play. All right, well, let's simulate this season, and let's see, man. Let's see if uh, our luck finally turns around. I keep asking myself that. I shouldn't be, but we'll see what happens.
Now we're talking. We finally had the season I think we were supposed to have. I don't even care about the awards because we got coach of the year at 64 and 18. I had a feeling we'd get coach of the year because we finally had the season that the Celtics should have in 2K all along. I don't know if that meant, I don't know if it needed to be that fired Joe Mazzullo was all the answer. I don't know. But I'm happy to see that we finally had some regular season success at the Celtics. Would more than likely have in real life. Derek White, all defensive second team, love to see that. And we are the first seed in the Eastern Conference. But we have not gotten past round two today. So hoping to look, you know, to change that. So we'll see if that ends up happening. So we are going to be playing the Orlando Magic in round one. So we're going to go to an item rotation. And we'll shrink the bench utilization down just a tad bit. I mean, that's maybe more than just a tad bit. But uh, it looks like Noah was starting, which I'm fine with. But all I care about is getting past the second round. So let's see if we can beat Orlando round one. And we are going to beat them in five. So off to a good start. But now we draw the Charlotte Hornets. We have Gary Trent, Miller, Miles, Isaiah Jackson as is our starting center. I imagine, um, you know, Porzingis should be able to eat over Isaiah Jackson. At least I hope. Nick Smith, Miles McBride, Kobe Buffkin. Holy moly. They have like a holy infinity gauntlet of small backup point guards. So yeah, 6-1. 6-2. Oh, I didn't realize Buffkin was that tall. My bad. I feel like an idiot now. Regardless, somebody go around against Charlotte. Please beat them. And we are in an even series with them. I think they beat us in year number one, didn't they? The Walsh is going to start. Very interesting. But we got to win this game five, man. I do not want to lose to Charlotte. I want to get it out of round two, man. In year four, it feels right to get out of round two. We are going to win game five very convincingly. But that doesn't matter because we ought to win game six as well. So let's see if we can come out here and beat Charlotte. In game six and not have to worry about a game seven and it's gonna be close but we're gonna take it at the end we keep the lead and we do okay we finally got out of round two we draw the knicks we actually beat last year so hopefully we can do that again so game one one to zero so far so good even it up two to one three to one please no even serious so man uh orlando didn't give us any problems but we're back against the knicks and we got to see if we can win this game five so here we go this is in TD Garden, and then we have to go to Madison Square Garden. So if we can go back with the win, that'd be awesome. And it's going to be close. It's going to go to their way, though, man. Damn, okay. We got to win game six. That's all there is to it. To force the game seven back to TD Garden, can we do it is the question. I think we can, but we got to keep this lead. We let the New York Knicks get it last time, and we're going to blow it here again at the end, maybe. All right, close game. I'm going to try to save jumping in later. 111, 108. Okay. Game seven. So if this one's close as well, we'll jump in and watch the end of this game seven. But here we go. Game seven to get to the NBA finals where we rightfully belong. Can we do it? I mean, it feels good to be in the conference finals, but you know, the NBA finals, it would feel good too. All right. So we got to get back in this game. And if we get back in it, I jump in and it's not looking like we're going to. The score has not moved in literally five minutes. Okay. Ah, uh, so, okay. Well, you know, think, oh, wait a minute. Uh, it was a three point game just a second ago. But yeah, we're going to lose 105 to 99. So, you know, it went better. We made steps to improve, but unfortunately the Knicks own us, I guess. Well, we beat them last year, but Wimbin Yama, Bonzi P for the Spurs. We got one last season to get this right. One last final try. We've done all that we could try to make this work. And, uh, you know, we made strides. We made strides last year. So that's all I can be uh, happy about. So I think we pretty much just leave things the way they are right now. I mean, we had success in the regular season. We're going into this final season. So I don't even care what we have in the draft. Uh, Derek White declines his player option, which is interesting. So we'll have to see what he wants in free agency. Um, Baylor Shireman is a free agent. Probably bring him back for depth, if nothing else. So Capella, probably bring him back. Peyton Pritchard. So we're probably resigning all these guys and just running it back again. So... Derek White going to sign back. Peyton Pritchard, we're going to sign back. Then Shireman will bring back. And then we're bringing back uh, Capella as well um, once we you know, can sign him to a contract. So Capella will bring back. Probably give him like a two-year deal or something. So, all right. Uh, all the salary sent out. And then Wiggins. Oh, I forgot about Wiggins. Hopefully, we can get him back because that was a huge piece to grab. And it may not give us the ability to sign him. Oh, man. What a heartbreaker that would be. Where are you, Aaron Wiggins? Can I get you back? That's Andrew Wiggins, not Aaron Wiggins. Um, okay. Oh, man, I'm nervous. Can we not get him back? So that's... Or is he already gone? Is Wiggins already gone? Might already be gone. Wow. Um, wait. Yeah, he's gone. Wow, that sucks. Okay. Um, where did he go? 
So let's see where he went, Wiggins. So we traded a pick. He went to the Grizzlies, and he signed for what? Uh, oh, he got a bag. So uh, it didn't say we had his bird rights. I guess I just... Wow, that sucks. Okay. We lose Aaron Wiggins. So that was a rental, I guess, uh, unfortunately. But one thing we do have still is Sam Hauser's salary. I assume we're still over that second apron, though. Yeah, definitely over it. So we'll try to see if we can do something with Sam Hauser's salary because that's... I mean, do we have... We, I mean, we've got ML, you know... We get Najee Marshall or something to move him to small forty might go up. But Noah was starting last year anyway, so it's not like that big of a deal. But I'll still see what I get for Sam Hauser. Well, why not? Let's do it. Sam Hauser and second round pick for Cameron Johnson kind of gives us the same kind of archetype, but just a little bit taller, uh, six eight rather than I guess Sam Hauser is six seven. I didn't realize how tall Sam Hauser was, but um, still, I mean, they're pretty much kind of the same archetype. Of course, both really good shooters, but. Cameron Johnson is more traditional power forward. So, uh, or, you know, Putt has played that traditionally. Sam Hauser doesn't really play power forward, I don't think. I guess I could be wrong. But let's go to player progression, and uh, we'll see. We'll see what this looks like. So player progression, you're going to have... Um, so Noah's up, so he's developing still. Pet is up. Cameron Johnson is down. It doesn't matter that much, though. It's not like Sam Hauser is playing, like, a hell of a ton of minutes. But, yeah, losing Wiggins sucks, but we're going into this final season with the optimism that... Um, last year was exactly what we expected, and we were one game away from making it to the NBA Finals. One game away. That's literally where we we're at. So, uh, with that being said, four and a half proficiency is still here. We're going to go ahead, submit this final season, and we are going to see if our hard work has paid off to finally get to the point where we belong. So here we are for this final season. No coach of the year MVP for us or anything like that. Uh, but we are going to not get an all NBA representative either, which sucks. But at the end of the day, we're after one goal. And that is to try to bring home this title back to TD Garden, back to Boston. So 28 from Jalen Brown, 24 from Tatum, 17 from Porzingis, 12 from Derek White, 11, or 12 from Noah, 9 from Pritchard, 8.5, and, and then 6.5 six and, and 6. Okay. Here we go. We're running nine minute rotation for these playoffs. We'll shrink the bench utilization down to 40, and we will see how we do. So Toronto in round one. Didn't they beat us in this video today? Well, let's see if we can get some sweet revenge. So we are going to sweep them, get them out of our face, and now we get the Pistons, who have uh, Cade, Kane Samuels, Asar, Ron Holland. I mean, this spacing is just absolutely atrocious, right? Asar, Ron Holland, I mean, whoever this guy is. I mean, come on. Do we beat this team? Hopefully we do. And we're up three to one. Don't blow three to one lead, please. And we do beat them. And now we get the Indiana Pacers. So it's not the Knicks this time. The Pacers. Looks like they lost someone significant, if I'm not mistaken. I feel like they had somebody good there when I played them last time. Well, here goes nothing. Somebody come around against the Indiana Pacers to finally get to the finals. And we're up two to one. Don't blow this. Three to one. Beat them in five. Come on. Okay. Game six. We were up three to one. Please don't blow this. Let's get to the finals. Come on, man. First time in this video. Fifth season's a charm, right? Ah, oh, man. It's going to be close. Oh, we take it at the end, though. Do not blow this. Get this done here. Get this done right now. Come on, Boston. Let's do this. And we are going to be very, very close. And I think we did it. Okay, that was an insanely close game. Rob Dillingham, we made it to the finals. We beat them by three. Wow. Did we have a last second bucket? Because it looked like they tied it at the end. Uh, Matherin free throw, free throw missed. Uh, okay. So Jalen Brown made a three at the end. Okay. Interesting. Wait, did they take the lead? No, they didn't. Okay. Are they, or did they, I don't know. They don't look like that. Okay. Whatever. That was really close, but Minnesota is our matchup in the finals. They have Mataz, Bozalis, Carly Towns, Nas, Reed, Big Daniels, Derek Queen, Jackson Robinson. All the work that we've gone through is to get to this point. Game one, one to zero goes to Minnesota. Oh, man. Two to zero. Okay. Uh, let's see. Can we find a way to win game three? No, we can't. And we win game four, though. Okay. Maybe we can win game five and make things interesting. Can we win game five? This is in Minnesota. And we are going to um, get close. Can we do it? No, we can't. Okay. Well, we made it back to the finals, but at the end of the day, your boy could not win a championship with the Celtics. Weird. It sounds so dumb and weird to say that, but for whatever reason, man, Boston is not loved by 2K. I don't know what it is as I hit my mic. That's how frustrated I am. But 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video regardless. I thought I did a decent job. Let me know. Am I the only one that struggles with Boston in 2K? Am I just that much of a freaking L? I don't know. Maybe it's just my share scenario. Let me know, guys, if you have this problem as well. Other than that, I will see you all in the next one. This is Crushables. I'm saying peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.